guys. Okay. Hello, hello. Welcome to Jim Does a Stream. J January 3D. That's me. Um, I'm gonna do a smart thing. If I can. This thing. No, that's literally not the thing. And we'll do this. If I just do that, and I can't see my face. Ah, now I look at the camera. Hello. How's it going? Just me. Um, so, if you've been a regular viewer, which you might have been, um, I did not do a stream last week, and I intended to do a makeup stream a couple of days later. Uh, I'd been unwell, nothing too serious. Uh, it just knocked me around a bit, and took much longer to get better than I was expecting. Um, and I'm still recovering, I think. I'm not 100%. I don't feel 100%, that's for sure. So, I still wanted to stream tonight. Um, I had every intention of doing so. Because uh, last week I streamed on the Friday. And I did Minecraft on Twitch. And that went great. Um, but it seemed to be my limit <laughs> for the week. Um, so this week I didn't want to miss out on uh, the 3D modelling stream. So, instead of doing Minecraft, I'm focusing on the... Uh, the 3D modeling. Now, this week we're going to be modeling Mimikyu, which is a very cutesy little Pokemon. Um, it's a ghost type, and it's the whole sort of little backstory behind it is it's a scared, shy little ghost Pokemon that's um, got some like a Pikachu costume and pulled it over its head, and it's like drawn in the eyes and the face and stuff with like crayon. And it's got like a big stick for its tail to make it look like a Pikachu. So that maybe someone will come along and be its friend. It's very cute. I, you know, thought it would be fun to make. And being that I'm not feeling 100%, it's a fairly simple uh, type of Pokemon. A fairly simple shape that we can make sure that I can definitely model that. And it won't be uh, too overwhelming. Um... Modeling the like Arceus a couple of weeks ago was fantastic. Uh, it was a lot of fun, and it felt uh, it felt like a challenge, and that was good. Um, but this week I'm not up to a challenge, so let's uh, keep it simple. I was always gonna, as a joke, do like a 20 minute stream or less, which was mostly me ram rambling on about crap, and then one minute of ah oh, yeah here's a Voltorb, and then back to just talking about whatever. Um, so we'll we'll jump into the modeling in a moment now if you are tuned in um, I've got a couple of links in the description now and they should come up every time um, that's for patreon and discord so I'd really encourage people to join the discord because it, a it's free it doesn't cost you anything and B I want to do a community type feedback stream or video um, possibly stream possibly video possibly a stream that's edited down into a video you know you never know um, where the people's issues like modeling issues are brought up and either a we have a spot where you can drop files in or something like that um, I haven't set anything like that up yet but um, that's something we can do. Uh, we can drop in a blend file and I can take a look. Or um, I, I was on Reddit the other day and there was some people asking for help on different subjects and I thought I had a little go and I was able to get a solution working um, but I wasn't... Um, I think by the time I'd done that other people had gone into the post and made certain comments and I went, well I'm not going to muddy the waters with my suggestions but um, I came up with what I thought was quite a good solution. Um, just to having some smoke trickling out of a box. Um, doing it with animated textures. By animating the UV... Or not the UVs, the texture coordinates. On just a cloud's texture and then layering that several times. Looked quite good. Anyway, uh, let's get into modeling Mimikyu. 
before I do, let me just have a moment of microphone. Okay. Uh, now it is worth mentioning, the old lady, the wife, she's got the cold that I had last week. So if you hear some coughing, nothing too serious, she's just got a cold. <laughs> Excuse me, I've got, my throat's feeling all funny now. Oh, as soon as you mention someone being sick, it's like, oh no, suddenly. <laughs> no. You gave it to me. <laughs> You're welcome. It's only through love that I can do such. Yeah. So let's add in a reference image. And this will, I mean, this, from what I saw of the image I grabbed not long ago, excuse me. There's not too much um, orthographic views of the Pokemon. There's kind of this front and side, um, but this front is obviously really tilted, the head, whereas it's not on this one. Um, and there's not really a alternative for that. So we might work on the side using this image, because that gives a fairly good profile of the big head and then the little body that's down here. Um, it looks like a fairly sort of bulbous little body. <coughs> Excuse me. With a couple of little cutouts for eyes um, and then a weird um, little black thing that sort of is offset from the spiky bits of this cloth and maybe a bit of stuff sticking out for the actual tail of the actual creature. Uh, oh here we go. Yeah, here's a diagram so you got the this is the, the black would be the actual pokemon and the white bit would be the, the cloth covering it so you can see that each of the little triangles are offset and then there's a little tail sticking out the back the wife is also playing uh, minecraft at the moment so she's probably <laughs> so she just died. That's fine. Um, okay, so let's move to side view, I think. We'll rotate on the Z 90 degrees. So that's facing the right direction. And we'll choose... Um, this one. And we'll go opacity. And bring that down. That way we can see through it. And back in the top view, we'll actually bring this all the way onto the other side. Go to wireframe and just plonk this guy roughly. Maybe bring it down a little bit like that. In the center of the world. Um, we'll probably start with the head, I guess. Uh, we'll do a control one. Have a look. Maybe a control two. Uh, let's do control one. So we've got a um, slightly subdivided uh, cube. We'll hit apply and we'll go into edit mode and start moving stuff around. So it's a fairly lumpy sort of looking dude. So we'll try to make sure it's not too rounded and smooth in the places where it's not meant to be. Um, it looks like the front of the face is fairly rounded. And we'll just move things around a bit. 
Um, I don't know if I move this here, I move this down, bring that out around there, and then bring these out. Probably bring these two in. Oh, we're not in the. Don't have a mirror going yet, so we'll delete those vertices on that side. Add in a mirror, turn on clipping. So these two vertices is where I was looking at making the neck come out of. Something like that. So make sure that's a fairly rounded looking shape. Something like that. Uh, now I'll obviously want to have another row of vertices around here just to keep that nice rounded shape to the head. And not make it so that the shape of the neck becomes the shape of the head. Because that would be silly. I uh, might add another row along here, start smoothing things out. And I feel like most of this should come out on the X just a bit. Um, it's fairly wider at the bottom and thinner at the top. Um, should be fairly flat on the top as well, probably. So just sort of comparing things and making sure that um, the design is followed. I might even bring these back out. Bring the top in on the X. Yeah, that's starting to get that shape now. There we go. So I'm going to add some ears in as well at some point. And we'll actually Maybe select all of this and extrude and scale uh, GX. Bring that right in and back. And just sort of uh, SZ0 to flatten that. You get an idea for the sort of shape and size. Um, I might add in actually a duplicate of this. And just have it sort of nearby whilst we're modeling. That will help us to um, make sure that the sort of shapes that we're making are more correct. So we want it to actually be widest near the bottom and then come in. It's sort of widest a bit too close to the bottom, I think. So bring this vertice up a bit. Probably bring that up a bit as well. Um, we might select it all in the SZ just a little bit. Was getting a bit too tall, I feel. Um, maybe we're getting back up just to match that. There we go. Right, this bit's a bit too tall. It's a very tough, lumpy shape to get the feel for. Because it's sort of a Pikachu... <coughs> sort of a Pikachu head shape, but it's also not. It's characteristically not, so... I don't want to go too overboard. I think we need to add in the body, start extruding down, and just get a feel for how everything's looking. I might loop tools 
to his loop to his circle. Scale it up. Um, that should definitely be on the middle. Okay. There we go. It's a bit better. And I'll go SZ0 again just to make that nice and flat. So this is roughly where the sort of the fingery bits come out and it seems to be sitting up on top of those rather than being super flat to the ground I guess they're going over the top of the, the black feet that are there as well so that's fine now in this illustration we've got one two three four five one two three four five six seven eight nine so probably a tenth one on the back like that. Turn an eleven maybe. For where the tail is. So that sort of gives us an idea for how many edges we want. So one, two, three, four. So we probably want a little bit more um, definition to what's going on. If we add one more, we got one, two, three, four, five, six. So we can do eleven or twelve. And just sort of line it up. That should be fine. Uh, we might scale in the Y just a bit to round that off. Okay. S Y a little bit. We'll add a loop here and scale that in the Y and bring it out just a little bit on the X. Now the once we've got the next parts in that should start to make a bit more sense. So we'll add we'll select these one, two, three, four, and then I guess we'll just select them all. <clears throat> we might have one extra finger, but you know, that's fine. Um, we'll do a control E, no, an alt E, uh, extrude edges. It's gonna not extrude them individually, okay. So, easiest way to get around that. We probably don't want these vertices down here at the moment. Just make sure that's not an option. No. A couple of ways to get around this. So we can extrude them out individually, which is what I think we'll do. We could have potentially extruded down and then extruded out individual polygons, which you can do. Um, but I don't really want to rely on that too much. Okay. Turn off clipping for this right now. We might. We'll leave a little bit of size to these edges. Um, turn off clipping again, bring them out. Okay. And I'll just look at where the um, edges actually are and just sort of try and make a fairly smooth looking triangle shape. down a little bit further okay and then we can extrude um, all of these edges I guess Just selecting the edges, shift clicking, there we go. Uh, turn clipping back on, 
extrude down in the Z. That's fine. Now we do want to fill all of these as individual separate pieces. Like we need to fill some of these faces as well because I didn't select them. That's okay. There we go. And we might. I feel like they should be a little bit higher so that we can have the little flat thing sitting underneath. Something like that. Yeah. So now we can sort of start to get an idea for proportions and how they're looking. Heads looking a little big and weird. Um, maybe a little bit. Like it should be, width wise, it should be pretty close. And it is, but it doesn't feel like it has the mass. So we'll add something like this in. Scale some stuff up. Uh, <coughs> I think this transition area should be a bit smoother. So we'll do that by just bringing these top edges up and out. And then we'll scale them in the Y as well. Not a perfectly smooth transition, but something a bit better than what it was. Um, might want to make the neck a bit wider as well. So it looks like it can actually be held up. Yeah, that's getting better. Um, So now it's not too much of an issue if we do add in an edge loop there, it's not going to change what we've done down the bottom. And I feel like we'll just select all of that and uh, smooth the vertices. And then scale up, bring it down a little bit. Scale this one in. ears on. Um, obviously we're using the mirror modifier at the moment so we can't really get too much happening there. Um, we do want to actually fix up the facial area so we use proportional editing a bit here. Just get the, the face should be a bit flatter is the best way to put it face area. So if I bring say these vertices forwards that, that will start to happen. And then the back should be actually rounder. Something like that. Might bring in these vertices a little bit just to try and get that head shape a bit closer. Something like that. I'm not going to go into too much crazy detail. Um, what we will do is we'll add the ears, which are roughly the middle of the head on the side and sort of on the side, so these sort of polygons here might extrude, oh, turn off proportional scale, move back a bit, 
so it comes to about there. Um, I don't want a bridge, I want to circle. Because these are very tubular looking ears. They're kind of like big socks um, sitting on the top of the head. <clears throat> so we'll try to position them about right and extrude them out. So they're fairly stocky and chunky and then they come out a bit further <clears throat> and then are come to a more of a point. Um, this top section seems to have sort of an overlap. It's a bit wiggly as well. Whereas the bottom section might have a slight bit of wiggle in it. Now they look more like horns, but that's just sort of a product of the the kind of style of Pokemon that it is, I guess. Um, we could probably make the ears go back. We select that loop and control plus, and then rotate, bring it back a bit, rotate, bring it back a bit, something like that. So they look a bit more ear-like, that's all right. Or we can always break the symmetry after we're done modeling. Um, and I think that will help with the actual character part. Uh, so now we will add, so we need to fill in all these gaps. So we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we'll add in a, um, oh, okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah, so it matches the same amount of prongs. We'll add in a, um, Cylinder, we'll go down here, we'll turn it into 12 vertices, and if that disappears, you can press F something to bring it back. No, you can't, it's F9. It is. Um, so, I just want to bring the radius down to about there, and I want to turn the cap fill type into nothing. And I can even, whilst we're still here, turn that depth all the way down. Beautiful. So now that's pretty much in place. Um, so we do want to scale it to be smaller than what we've already got. Maybe move it back in the Y a bit and then scale it up a little bit. And then we do want to try and rotate it so that so if we rotate it 360 divided by 12, nope, um, do 180 divided by 12, nope. Okay, let's just hold down control and rotate it until it's flat at the top and flat at the bottom, because that means we can then extrude out the triangle um, that intersects or is sort of underneath um, the rest of it. So it's the black bit. And what we will do with that is actually, because this is all polygons, <clears throat> um, we will control, uh, we do Alt E and extrude individual faces. And then we get this effect, which is lovely. And I think if we do Alt S, it also scales down individual areas. So we get a pretty quick and easy way to get the shape that we want. Uh, we will then do a control R down the center of each of these two. <coughs> Excuse me. And select the left side. We'll keep it a separate object just for now. And add in a mirror modifier with clipping. And then we'll sort of move things around a little bit randomly without too much precision and then come into sort of the 3D view and realize that we have done something crazy <laughs> so we'll S, Z and just go through until it reverts no, okay uh, we don't want to select the inside parts so uh, this is a good use for the circle select so I press C 
and I just sort of paint with my uh, by holding down left mouse and then right click to exit that and then S and Z to flip that back around get it nice and small there something like that and then bring these below a little bit something like that and then at the back we actually had um, the weird tail thing that's supposed to be uh, coming out so we will select um, these bits and bring that out um, add in a few loop cuts you know make it all a bit wiggly and whatever um, maybe add in a couple of loop cuts there bring things out in a funny way bring that middle bit in because it sort of was a pronged sort of shape um, even sort of add in more loop cuts and make spiky things happen along each of these because it's a very spiky sort of situation and then maybe with all of this selected um, we'll do select random Oh, let's select nothing and go select random and then B and middle click to deselect um, the stuff there and then the base of the tail and then I'll scale that up on the Z and then I'll do that same thing again so deselect everything uh, select random B and middle click to deselect stuff deselect around the base of the tail as well and then S and Z and that will just give us a bit of variation throughout the shape of the tail which is good. Um, we probably want to add a loop cut to each of these just to maintain the shape. And do the same on this part as well. And also sort of make sure that this is sitting on top of that tail it's currently not. There we go, something like that. Um, maybe if the scale this in quite a bit and sort of have it hanging off to the side. So I think it's supposed to be where there was a triangle but it sort of got split by the tail being there. Starting to get there. I think I want to add in the tail next, which is the the stick tail, the fake tail. Um, so we'll do that with another cylinder. Um, Twelve will be fine. Uh, much smaller radius and a bit of depth to start off as, us off as well. And we'll start probably at the top of the tail. I think clear that up. So this again is supposed to be a stick, you can see it's circular there and in all the sort of other references it's quite clearly a circle. Um, so we will aim to incorporate that. And we can even move this all the way down, scale it down a bit. Now it looks like, um, I mean it's like a Pikachu tail, so there they're an unusual shape to model anyway. Um, but what I will try and do is sort of make the stick flow sort of like this. It being a Mimikyu and being like a janky sort of costume, it sort of still fits the, um, the style of this Pokemon as well, to do it like this. We can even just sort of grab some vertices and make sure that the um, the silhouette's being maintained, which it isn't in all areas. 
There we go. Let me add in a loop or two for this section. And then we want to fill this with some polygons. Um, I'll probably do something like this. So we've got a polygon there, polygon there, polygon there. There we go. Nice and filled in. Um, oh, that's a. This is not a mirrored object. So we'll add in another vertice there. Fill that. Uh, fill that. And then fill there. Beautiful. Okay. So we've got the weird stick tail thingamajig going. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, what more physical details do we need? Probably. Let's try subsurf modifier first before we do anything else. Just to make sure everything's looking okay. And shade things smooth. Oh. And that's looking fine. Um, probably a little bit too thick at the bottom here. So I might select the polygons that are on top. Just by hand. And then G and then Z. Just to make it look more like cloth rather than like um, something squishy. We'll add in an edge loop, probably towards the bottom. Yeah, that's a bit better. And then in, in on the inverse of that, um, the bottom part here is actually looking quite um, skinny when it should be thicker because it's actual legs rather than just weird stuff that's covering. So we'll bring that to be a bit thicker. We'll add the edge loop just to the middle and that will allow it to maintain being thick and not sharp in any specific area. Um, yeah, that's looking fine. So, the rest of the work is probably in texturing. I'm not super happy with the shape of the head still. It's a bit wonky. Um, but, like I said, I'm still not feeling 100%, so I'm not super sure on how I would fix all of this. Maybe bring this out a little bit. Maybe bring the cheeks, or where the cheeks would be, out a little bit, scale them up. That sort of thing. Try and make it look Pikachu-ish. Um, but we've got all the physical components to the Mimic U. So let's uh, get into texturing. So we'll do a little bit of, uh, let's turn that off in edit mode. We'll do a little bit of unwrapping. Um, so we'll mark a seam there. We'll probably just go down the whole middle of the thing as well. Um, around the ear here, mark seam, and then along the, so if I select here and then control select here, it will pick the shortest route, so make sure we get all of these polygons in there, and mark that seam. Um, for the feet, there's not really a super perfect good way to do them. Uh, what we could do is select the middle edge loop that we just added in that sort of pushed towards the bottom and mark that as the seam. That's probably the simplest and easiest way to do it. Uh, we've also got this inner ring selected. I think that was selected somewhere else, but that's fine. That will just give us a bunch of triangles sitting around. Uh, we'll know what they are. Okay, um, the tail we'll just cut in half, mark seam, and we'll actually oh, um, cut off the top bit because that's actually like half of the 
size of it, and then this is the other half, so we'll cut that in half. And then the thing under here, it's going to be pretty much all, um, all black anyway, or grey, so I'm not too worried about that, so we'll just split it along the sort of middle line of it. Um, now there is one last detail I actually want to add in before we go to actually click unwrap. I wanted to add in the little eyeball or little eye holes that are here. Um, probably on this polygon. And extrude it in. And I almost feel like I should erase the face. Go to vertex mode, extrude and scale to make sure that there's uh, no space for it to be weird. Let me scale that in so it's nice and rounded. Yeah, we've got little eye holes. Now they're probably a bit too far apart at the moment, so we'll try and um, make it so that this can be, oh, I don't want to go to shaded or rendered. So we'll select all of those components of it. We'll rotate, bring it more towards the center. Um, it might be a situation where we need to select these as well. Do something like that, a little bit funky. It's getting there. So now I need to bring them back. And then forwards a bit. That's pretty good. And then I want to actually make them thinner. So something like this. I select the top and scale and then select the bottom and scale. There we go. So we've got two thin but tall little eye holes that are here. Um, they might need to be a bit bigger overall, I think. Yeah, something like that. That looks all right. And then we want to add, um, basically I think we'll just add a plane behind there, honestly. I think that will be fine. Um, clipping is off, which is good. This will just be black. This will basically be the eye, but all you ever see of it is black. Okay, move forwards at the Y until it starts to intersect. And that looks good to me. Beautiful. So now. Let's go to object mode. Let's bring this down so it's actually in that tail thing. And let's um, apply the mirror. And apply the mirror. And select everything. Control J. It's all one object. Should be fine. <coughs> oh dear. We'll do an unwrap. Then we click here with texture paint. We can see the unwrap. Um, not sure why that's overlapping. Not sure why that's overlapping. But we'll make a new image. Make it 2048. Oh, turn on my num lock. Or turn off my num lock. Uh, we'll call it diffuse. And hit OK. So now it's black. And then in the material here, under base color, we'll go image texture and choose diffuse. So now it's all black. Uh, now we want like these faded yellow colors. 
Um, we'll probably, if we select the empty and go to not texture paint mode, go back to layout, select an empty, um, and turn the opacity back up. It's still this faded yellow color. Um, so that's the main color of the body. And then there's sort of like an orange for the cheeks and a squiggle across the face. Um, yeah, so because this is obviously the texture is very asymmetrical, I unwrapped after we applied the mirror, not before. Um, we'll see what goes on with these bits, I think. Might be the ear. So maybe that won't be. Let's go to edit mode here and go to uh, view. Go to UV editor. There we go. That's considering itself to be one piece, which I'm not sure about. What's connecting there? What is this? What if we go to, one of these usually has it, it's not there, I'm missing a button, ah oh, there it is, okay, oh it's just the, some of the feet that are underneath there, okay, that's fine, they'll all just be like plain yellow anyway, it's not an issue, uh, that's the tail section, ah oh, these are ears, oh that's a tail section, that's an ear. That's an ear. Lovely. Okay, I think I've got it pretty much figured out now. And then this is the body. Um, which bit's the head? I don't know. Oh, this is the head. Oh, those are the holes where the ears. Okay, and then these are the eyes that we just modeled in. Beautiful. Okay, so now we can go to um, image editor. On this side, we can be in texture paint mode and we can start from here. We can try and pick this sort of yellow, this off yellow. I'm going to color palette, new, and add. We'll just see how this looks on the whole thing. I think I want it to be slightly more saturated. So that looks weird. Yeah. So it should have come this way a little bit. I'll try the fill thing here. Uh, that's not what we've got selected. Select this this way a bit and then fill. So that's too orange. So we'll come over here somewhere. About there. That's way too green. That's a bit closer. It's not like this is closer to what I'm seeing here but this is not. Maybe if we go to yeah okay so that's a bit better. That's actually much closer when we look at a render type view, or a <laughs> texture type view. Um, render is sort of between the viewport and that. So, we will make sure that's all the way up. And then, oh, over here. And it gets blown out. So it's just a matter of maybe something like that. A little bit more yellow. 
yeah, about there. I think that's about right. It's a little bit darker, um, but it's pretty close to what I'm feeling. Okay, so um, on the um, oh, did I? I must have. If I go to layout. And number two little planes oh. back here. There you go. I'll make sure I guess these have what I mean, I guess they should have seams. I don't know if that will affect things. Uh, if I go to UV editing, they are like that, okay. Scale these down, I'll just put them in the middle of there. Make use of my UV space. And then we can go back to texture paint. Fantastic. So then we can just pick black for that. Maybe switch. And then grab the brush smaller, make it a lot smaller, I've just, I think I just painted, yeah I did, okay, F to make it smaller, there we go, uh, we'll press N on this panel and switch it to black, so now we've got two black little eyes in there, beautiful, that's what we wanted. And this is actually the underneath thing. We'll probably make it more of a gray to start off with. And because it's all one object, I can't just use the bucket fill. That's okay. Okay, lovely. Make sure that's added to the palette. Um, I should probably Alt Shift no uh, N. Come over here, pick this color, switch, go to color palette, add that to the palette. So we've got that yellow as well. Um, we'll paint the top of these feet with the gray. A very dark grey. Make that a bit bigger. I can just blob it on. Okay. Make sure none of this is affected by that. This spot here, I think, was painted over. There we go. So we've got a weird black looking fella underneath there. Um, got a bit of yellow here. Bonk. Beautiful. That's fixed. Nope. Okay, so the tips of the ears are sort of dipped in paint black. It's kind of funny. Now the ears were these bits. Again, I'll use this sort of charcoal black color. Um, I think we want to go to about here. Just about a little bit lower. Yeah, around there. Now I am just using my mouse and keyboard for all this at the moment. Um, I would typically just grab my tablet and do this, but I do like to show that it can be done with your mouse and keyboard like normal because it's a control method we're all used to. Make sure the colour there isn't interfering. Beautiful. And then do a similar paint over on this side. Oh, 
it'll be a little bit messy and tidy it up later. Now, I am looking over the, here at the references. I'm seeing that it's actually very much not a straight line. So I'll incorporate some sort of ziggy zaggy bits on purpose. That makes it look a bit more weird and natural. That's fine. Uh, we'll come back to this colour and just tidy up here with a nice small brush. Beautiful. Okay, um, and the tail, which I believe is this part, should be a medium brown. I was going to say light, but it looks fairly medium. Maybe something like that. Pretty sure this is the tail that I'm painting on here. Yeah. Okay, how's that look? It looks like I painted on a quarter of the tail. There's another piece. It's the other side. So this is where Organising your UV maps beforehand is actually very useful. Now I'm getting the feeling that these two pieces here are the tip. So if I had organised and spent the time and figured out which exactly which island belonged to which group them together so that all of the tail bits are together then um, I would be doing a bit less searching and just spend more time painting which is generally what we want okay so we've got a little wooden tail probably not the perfect color um, but will it do it absolutely will um, that would benefit from some texturing, so maybe darken the brush a little bit, um, make it smaller, and then start painting on you know, some woody type stuff. That will make it look a bit more natural. Um, you sort of look at the tip. You might want to do some um, a lighter colour on the end here. Um, that's a bit outside of the scope of what we're doing today. We'll just get some lines in there to sort of show it should be textured. There we go. Just a little bit of sneaky texture. Painted over some spots there, so I'll fix that up. And I can see where I've painted over on the ear over here. So, what I might do is got this color, I'll fix it up from here, and then soak the charcoal. Oops. Fix that up like that. Beautiful. Okay, so the eyes are sort of scribbled in, and the mouth is a big wiggly line that's kind of looks smiley, and then there's scribbled in cheeks as well. Um, so this would be a really good use for your tablet if you've got one. Um, I'm going to choose to paint in the, just a regular mode like this, so I can still see what I'm doing, that's fine. Uh, we'll pick a fairly small brush size, something like that. Maybe a bit smaller. Paint the eyes. They're sort of like this. Okay. 
I just don't have a very steady hand with the mouse, so when you are trying to do some slightly more detailed stuff, it can be tricky. And mice are not very good at drawing in circles. I'll just go over a few times. Um, they should definitely be further apart. <laughs> uh, let's just uh, say goodbye to them. Bye bye. Bye bye. So, pretty much under the ear is where we need to be. So, around there and around there. Maybe a little bit closer than that. Yeah, ish. Do a <coughs> do a quick squeal. Get the idea. So I'm trying to make it asymmetrical as well. Um, yeah, I'm ending up because I'm using a big brush. I'm just drawing really big eyes. So. One about here in a big scribbly fashion. Probably about this size, a little bit taller. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then one over here that's a bit smaller. Going a little bit. Okay. So then we've got the uh, reddish cheeks, the orangey red. Yeah, that's all the colour. Add that to the palette. So there, just either side of the eyes, in a very similar style. In fact, there looks like it's a bit of a circle and then a bit of a side to side. As well. So we'll do that. Make it sort of fairly obvious that that's in there. Gray with a slightly bigger brush, a little bit more zigzaggy. So we're going down, up, down, up, down, up. So down three times. Okay, so sort of start higher and then come down to about here, a bit more spread out. Yeah, something like that. The eyes do still feel a bit too far apart. Um, but I'm going to go crazy if I keep painting the same thing over and over. So, last step. It's not the best looking Mimikyu, I'll be honest. I'm not feeling 100%, so I'm not. I'm literally doing this in half the time I normally would, so. Um, Chill bro on the critiques, I know it's not great, but it's fine. We'll add in a little bit of asymmetry.
we could even give him sort of a little bit of a pose. Deselect the tail. So he's looking like this. Yeah, something like that. Maybe bring up oh, the center of this. Something like that. Just make it look a bit weird. And then that's the Mimikyu. We did it. Well done, team. I'm so proud of us and me. Maybe bring the tail out. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you make a Mimikyu. Ooh, it's very bright there. Uh, we'll chuck in... Um, oh, not a checker texture. God. A environment texture. Go to where I know I've got uh, stuff. There. Go there. Go there. This one. There we go. And we can hide the old background um, in one of these. There we go, film. Transparent. There we go. So we've got a cute little looking Mimikyu doohickey. Um, spend a bit more time on the tail, the, like the piece of wood, I think. Maybe if you wanted to make it look realistic, I guess you could add in a wood texture and maybe like a slight cloth texture to the whole thing. Um, it definitely needs to be less shiny because it's so shiny right now. Let's turn down the specular, turn up the roughness. A little bit of specular is normal, um, but not that much. And yeah, it would probably benefit a lot from lots of creases and those sort of um, additions to the model whether those are through textures like um, normal maps or just by adding in detail to the model. Um, the new um, cloth brushes that are built into Blender on the sculpting side might get some good results for that. Um, I haven't experimented with them yet, so I'm not too sure. Um, but that's a Mimikyu. I'm fairly happy with my results. Um, let me know if, you're, if you've been following along, if you've had a go. Um, I've got a link in the to the Discord in the um, description box below, so check that out. We've got a link to Patreon if you'd like to support me. All the model files, all the blend files will be uploaded there um, for Patreons to access. Uh, so if you'd like to study the files and understand how things are put together a bit better, then you have, uh, you'll have access to that. Um, there's a couple of tiers on there, they all get have the same access, it's just depending on uh, levels of support that people would like to do, because I know people like to, some people might not have as much, and, but still want to support, and that's, you know, fine. Um, some people have more, and they want to support more, so I have that option as well. Um, yeah, what else have we got going on? Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube, uh, chuck a comment in the bottom, um, let me know, say, uh, if you've been watching this far, say in the comments, Mimikyu has a creepy wooden tail, and that's how I will know that you watched the end of the video. Um, yeah, hit like, subscribe, all that kind of fun, fun YouTube stuff. Um, hopefully I'll be a bit more myself by next week. Um, still got a few more days of recovery, and actually what, <laughs> what I've been doing the last couple of days to help. Uh, to relax. It's just I've got my DS out and I'm playing uh, Pokemon uh, Black 2. Um, I started to play through that like a year ago or something. Uh, so I've picked that up again um, while I'm feeling a bit unwell and um, going through that. I'm having a lot of fun um, and just chilling out. They're you know, not too focused. It's something you can put down whenever something comes up with the kids um, and it, I'm not feeling too stressed about it so that's good. Um, yeah so you know, Pokemon is still something that I enjoy playing, is what I'm saying. Um, yeah, anyway, till next week, thanks for tuning in, 
I love you all, and I will see you.